Let's get this started. I'm really excited to be here to talk about an amazing company right out of Europe. It's going from Poland to the world. So let's start it off by talking about, can you tell me a little bit more about the founder story of Brainly and how you got the idea? Yeah, sure. So uh, as was introduced, Brainly uh, is a global learning community. Uh, we unite students, teachers, and parents in solving their academic problems, mm -hmm. and we help them to exchange knowledge between, uh, between each other. And uh, the story started with, the inspiration was my high school. Okay. Uh, so my class was very collaborative. We were, uh, we were asking questions, answering questions all the time. Uh, and, uh, and the foundation for Brainly is to move that behavior online. So uh, we build Brainly with the uh, assumption that, okay, having 20 friends in your classroom or 40 friends, depending on where you are around the world, is mm -hmm. great. But being able to ask your question to millions of other students uh, it's, it's even better. And um, yeah, like every question that gets asked, we put it into our knowledge base, so then it's uh, uh, easier accessible for other students. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we do, and uh, that's the brain story. Awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about how the platform itself works? So when a student goes on, can they just ask all the questions they have? Can they just put their homework up and have everyone answer it? How does it work? Yeah, so we have three... Uh, types of usage. One comes from students. So students, the typical use case is that there is a pop quiz the next day, and they are trying to prepare, and they don't understand something. Or there is a, one of the homework questions is really difficult, mm -hmm. and they don't understand how to do it. So then they go to Brainly to ask questions and, and, uh, and, and understand the topic. Uh, but we also have parents and teachers using us. So the typical parents' use case is that they were asked a question by, uh, by, by their kids and they don't know how to answer, so they go to Brainly, uh, check the answer, understand how to do it, and then they go back to their, to their kids to, to explain. And the teacher's use case is, uh, um, uh, is quite special because we are really engaging to teachers who are passionate about education. So, uh, so there are teachers who, even after school, after, after the paid time of their, of their day work, they still would like to help students a lot. Uh, and what Brainly gives them is that uh, they can help thousands of students, not only the classroom that they have at school. Wow, that sounds like an amazing community. Um, and as was just mentioned before, now you guys are, you have 100 million students from all over the world, but you started in Poland. So can you tell me a little bit about, of course, you are from Poland, so yeah. why you started there? Why didn't you just go to the US or somewhere else in Europe to start your company at first? Yeah, we started about 10 years ago, so uh, that was a bit of a different time in Poland from funding perspective. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to focus on the market that we understand. So we knew that this niche exists in Poland. Uh, but at some point, we, uh, we discovered that there is more than a billion students, and every student needs help in learning every day. And this is where we would like to be to help them. So uh, we decided to enter new markets, and we started with Russian-speaking markets, okay. and uh, where we have about 80 to 90 percent of middle and high school students using us every, uh, every month. Wow. And uh, right now, we are really excited about India. It's our newest market, uh, growing really fast, so uh, exciting times. That's awesome. So how did you manage that transition from focusing just on Poland to focusing on places like Russia and places like India and even more countries? Yeah, I think the big conclusion was to understand which parts of our product we need to globalize and have one mm -hmm. unified version between all of the geographies, but also which part needs to be uh, localized for each market. So uh, like right now, that answer looks obvious because every country has a different curriculum, right. but we were struggling to understand, uh, really, really to put that border between uh, global product that is unified with uh, localized part of the product. So our knowledge base is localized, so each market has its own knowledge base where students ask and answer questions. Okay. But the product from look and feel perspective is exactly the same around, around the world. Very cool. I think that was the main challenge, to really understand what is global, what is local. Interesting. And are there any interesting specific examples about localization in specific markets that surprised you? or? Anything? Yeah, so for example, India is very focused on test preparation and on uh, and, uh, and students, in fact, are very committed to, to learning to get, uh, like, to pass the exams in the best possible way because that's the ticket for them to get an engineering degree or medical degree. Okay. Um, 
And, uh, and what we've noticed is that that use case in our Indian platform is very, very uh, popular. Uh, markets differ between, between each other, depending on development of the educational system. And uh, every educational system has its flows. Mm -hmm. And we see that uh, on a daily basis in the way students use our platform. Very interesting. So from Russia, India, and tons of other countries, now you're moving into the United States, which is one of the most competitive markets for education in the world. Can you tell me a little bit about the decision to go to the US, and what's, what is it like there? Yeah, so what we've seen, like US is obviously that like, huge market with right. uh, a lot of spending power uh, done, uh, done online. So I think it pops up on the radar of any, any consumer company around the world. So, uh, so that was that, you know, that country that we really wanted to, to enter. Um, but, uh, but the journey um, uh, is, is slightly different because we decided to set up an office to, to enter the US market. We just thought that, that to win the US, we need to, uh, we need to focus on our product, make sure it's, it's polished to the, to the extent to like, match the competition. But in the meantime, what we've discovered is that there is, in fact, quite a lot of products that go kind of like via schools to students. Okay. So they approach schools, teachers, and then teachers refer students to use the product. Very interesting. Uh, but our model is different. Like we approach students directly because what we see is that students are a lot more active if it's their own decision to use the educational product. Definitely. And then what we see are teachers and parents to, to follow. And there are products that are using that model in the US. Uh, but, uh, but there are not that, uh, that many in that space specifically. Interesting. So it's really like reaching out to those students and getting them involved, and then they get those teachers and parents involved as well. Yeah. So how do you reach out to the students? Is it word of mouth? How do you build that community? Yeah, so, so we, we are lucky to have purely organic growth, so our marketing budget is pretty much non-existent. Um, and our growth model is fairly simple. So when a question receives an answer, we put it into our knowledge base. The bigger the knowledge base gets, more people are coming, and that means more questions, more answers. So that's this snowball that keeps growing and, uh, and helps more students. Very interesting. And I guess, so you guys serve teens, right? How do you really get into their heads and understand yeah. what their problems are with education and homework? How do you understand that? Yeah, I think that's, that's the toughest part of this, because uh, students and teenagers are, uh, uh, are this user group who, who is changing their their products very, very easily. Um, and our answer to that was really to focus on, um, on, on our product and keep it simple mm -hmm. and focus on one use case. And that use case is to um, make sure that the learning is more, is more efficient. Okay. So then when you remove that part kind of being in the fashion mm -hmm. type or, uh, or being just a trend that, that right. this generation of teenagers uses, but the next one may not be using, Right. Uh, like was a cautious decision. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we just try to like, deliver the need that every student has and, uh, and do it with a, with a simple product that they can easily understand. And that's our way to stay relevant. So uh, yeah, we started in Poland about 10 years ago. Um, and uh, and yeah, like we keep growing and uh, we don't see any, um, any pushback from students. And I think that's it's kind of that combination of luck and planning. <laughs> and how are you working on any personalization for students? How does that work? Yeah, so, so what we are doing is that we have this huge knowledge base. So we have about 70 million answered questions in our knowledge base. Mm -hmm. And what we do is that uh, the ultimate vision is to suggest the right content or the right person to help to any student that is using our product. So, uh, so, so what we are doing is that we are Investing, uh, investing a lot into our machine learning team to understand how the content is connected, but not only from the purely academic perspective, but also to, to help students connect the dots. Mm -hmm. So they can see that, OK, linear equations can be used in this specific way in my adult life mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they are more excited about learning. Interesting. So one thing that I thought was really cool when I was reading about Brainly was these Brainly superstars, these yep. students that go in and they answer hundreds of questions. And they're kind of like, I don't know if influencer is a good word, but they're just like an amazing example of someone using the platform. Yep. Can you tell me about these superstars? Have you met some of them? Yeah. Like, in <laughs> fact, recently I've been to an event in Warsaw. And uh, somehow there was a 14-year-old boy okay. who, who approached. 
I don't think it's, uh, hello? <laughs> I'm not sure that the mic, mic is working. You want to talk one more time? Try talking again? It's off. Yeah, I think the mic is not working. Oh, well. Um, OK. I guess it doesn't. Perfect. Thank you so much. So the Bring Me Superstars and this 14-year-old kid at this event in Warsaw. Tell me about him. Yeah, and, uh, and he approached me and asked, hey, like, are you the person who started Brainy? And I said, yes. And he said, thank you, because when my parents cannot help me with homework and I really struggle with something, Brain is there to help me. Uh, but we, what we've done was to look at research, and what we've noticed is that Brainy as a product makes students more curious. Mm -hmm. So before, they, when they struggled with a question, they didn't really have a lot of options, because they could ask their parents, they could ask their friends, but both options are, are very limited time-wise. Right. But because they go to Brainy and they understand topics, they can they, they start embracing more tough questions. Mm. And, uh, and then from, from the perspective of, uh, of asking new questions, they just feel more empowered. Interesting. Cool. So then I want to pivot a little bit more and talk about ed tech in general. So what do you see being some big trends in ed tech over the next five years? What are you excited about? Yeah, I think that there are a few things. Like one space is are all of the products that make the school more efficient. So, uh, so as I mentioned, there is quite a lot of products who go to schools and try to get teachers excited, and then students kind of follow the choice that teachers have made. Uh, and that space like, is going to help to make the classroom more engaging, more rewarding, but also to optimize the time of teachers. Because teachers, in fact, work a lot, and they need to put a lot of extra hours if they, uh, if they really want to become uh, amazing teachers and mm -hmm. be considered like that. So uh, my sister is a teacher, and I see how much work she needs to, to do. And uh, I've seen her embracing new technologies, and, uh, and that works really, really well for her. Uh, the second part, as I've mentioned before, is that, is that direct to student product. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that outside of school space, where students can, depending on if they need to catch up with a topic, or if they, if they are really interested in something and they want to explore more, and learn more, uh, they, can, they can get there and, and get that help. So I think these are the two major trends right now. And then there is a question of delivery so of, of a platform. Yeah? Like you have mobile products, you have AR, VR. All of that will, will reinforce these two big trends. But I think the big trends will stay uh, pretty, much, uh, pretty much the same. So within all of those trends, what's next for Brainly? Uh, yeah, I think there are a few things. One thing that we are really excited about is, is our growth in India. It's our fastest growing market, really focused on education, and I think educational technology space is really strong in India. Um, students are really motivated. They, they understand that, that to progress their life, they, they need to spend a lot of time in learning. It's the, it's the same uh, with, uh, with parents. And, uh, and in fact, what we see is that there is quite a lot of products already there that we can learn from. But what we can do with that, with that learnings is to, is to make them global. Right. So, so uh, recently, we, we've, uh, uh, we've noticed a behavior of our students in India, of our users in India. And, and then we build a feature for, uh, for that use case. And we've noticed that it can work very similarly around the world. Interesting. So, so what we... So what we are doing is that because we are present in about 35 countries, we can get learnings from each country about making learning more efficient. Mm -hmm. And then we can implement that solution around, uh, around the world. Fascinating. And what about the US? What's next for Brainly in the US? Uh, US is, is a market where we, are, uh, where we are growing fast. Like In fact, it's one of the markets where we monetize. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we are really focused on, on, on building a successful monetization story based on our uh, uh, US, uh, US traction. Uh, but yeah, like we would like to onboard more students, more, more parents and teachers in the US, and that's our main focus for that market. Very interesting. And so as you're going forward, I just wanted to ask if you think there's any advantages to being a European company or your experience coming out of Poland that's helping you compete on a global stage. Uh, I think like we 
quite quickly realized that to, to, that to build a big, impactful business in Poland, we need to become global. And, and that helped us to push our culture to be very diverse and, uh, and international uh, very early. Okay. So, uh, so I think we have about uh, people from 20 different nationalities working on Brainly wow. uh, right now, and we, and we embrace that, uh, uh, that cultural background that we need to understand to be present in so many, in so many markets. And uh, I'm not sure if that's true for uh, other European countries, but when it comes to Poland and building that B2C business, I think it's a great advantage for us to have um, so many cultures and try to understand them and build products that, that are appealing to, to all of the countries. Yeah, I definitely feel like that's true of many European startups. They have that diversity and that resilience kind of baked into them from the yeah. beginning. Because there's no yeah. single one market here in Europe, yeah. they have to learn how to understand many different consumers from the beginning. So yeah. definitely feel like that's true. So then one final thing is, do you yourself go on to Brainly and actually answer questions? <laughs> yeah, I try to do it as often as possible, but uh, the reality is that Questions at high school level are so difficult. Oh no! <laughs> and, and that's why I totally understand parents who are struggling with helping their kids. Yeah. And and why they come to Brainly, because like the the level where I answer questions are uh, middle school questions. Uh oh. <laughs> and I love questions about interest rates and uh, uh, in math. I think that's that's why my sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm trying to uh, where I'm trying to help. But high school is definitely. Uh, really difficult. Yeah, definitely. I've looked at some of my brother's homework and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I could never even do this. <laughs> Very cool. So how many questions do you think that you've answered on Brainly? I think I've answered in total like uh, tens of questions and uh, it's hard to aggregate because like Brainly, as I mentioned, is localized per market. So mm -hmm. I started answering in Poland, then I, I've, started, I've been answering in our US version. That's so, so cool. So that's my activity is kind of spread between, between different markets. Wow. Yeah. International Brainly user. <laughs> okay, and then the final question is, do you have any advice for found European founders today who are looking to create a global business? What's a one piece of advice you'd give them? Yeah, I think it's, it's important to, uh, to embrace what, what your background gives you. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, in our case, it was to see that you, cannot build a, you can no longer build a huge B2C business out of Poland. And then that pushes you to, to think about uh, so what are my next steps and what's the strategy to really achieve your, uh, your ambitions? And then it's about keeping the focus, making sure that you, uh, that you are focused on one thing or like two, maximum three at, the, at a given time and that you push and push and push. Because at some point there will be that rewarding moment that will come and, uh, and that's a great feeling. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It was awesome to hear about Brainly. Thank you very much. And anyone who's good at math, go on and answer some questions and help the students out at Brainly. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.